Okay, great. So um, our next speaker is uh, Roman uh, Garaz, who is speaking about universal covers of rooted graphs and their Hickman Thompson group. Yes. Uh, all right. Hello, I'm Roman. Uh, maybe I'll start my video as well. You can see me. Uh, it's, can't see much. Uh, but uh, yes, I will talk about uh, universal covers of root craft and their Hingman Thompson groups. So um, I will explain what both of those concepts are. Uh, but I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. So let's start with the Thompson groups. Uh, the Thompson groups are three groups, F, D, and V, uh, discovered by Richard Thompson, I think, in the 70s. And they, they are very interesting uh, groups. They can be constructed in a variety of ways and they call them the chameleon groups. But in this talks, uh, we will look at them as elements of pairs of binary trees and uh, bijection between their leaves uh, with some equivalence relation, which uh, will become apparent later. Uh, so uh, we will mostly look at the group V, where the bijection of the leaves is arbitrary. Uh, so um, we can embed this um, uh, this group V in the uh, as a subgroup of almost as automorphism of the infinite binary tree, which I will define later. Uh, and uh, just one uh, uh, one remark: if we don't look at uh, don't look at this as uh, pairs of binary trees with. Uh, a bijection between leaves, uh, but uh, just pairs of um, uh, n array trees, then we get uh, the Higman Thompson group. Just a generalization that was uh, introduced uh, by Higman later on. So uh, let's talk about almost isomorphism first. So, an almost isomorphism is. Um, well, an isomorphism is just uh, an automorphism is just an isomorphism between the same tree to the same tree. But uh, if we say almost, we mean we don't care about a finite part of our tree. So we take away some finite tree, uh, subtree T1, and some finite subtree T2 in the domain and range, and then we do some isomorphism. Um, uh, we will say that those isomorphisms are the same if they restrict to the same uh, isomorphism again on a comp on another complement of finite trees. Uh, and again, just a notational um, remark: we will always assume that our finite subtrees are complete, uh, which means the um, and a vertex of those subtrees is either uh, a, a leaf or all of its neighbors are contained in the subtree. Um, so uh, to better look how we can embed the higman thompson group in this uh, uh, group of almost automorphisms, uh, we, um, we will this is easy as done if we look at not just any tree, but the um, uh, the universal cover of a rooted graphs. For this, we have to define graphs, uh, which is uh, uh, you have to do all the time because everybody defines their graph differently. Uh, but my graphs uh, in this talks will be very general graphs. Um, very general um, directed graphs. We can have loops, we can have multiple edges, whatever we want. So we have a set of vertices, a set of edges, and two functions, origin and terminus, uh, that tells us where, a or where an edge starts and where uh, the edge terminates. Just uh, a little bit of notation, we've got the edge neighborhood of a vertex and 
the origin neighborhood, so the outgoing neighborhood, and the terminating neighborhood, uh, depending on whether we look at all the edges that start at V or all the edges that end at V. And if we uh, look at you know the edges uh, uh, that they terminate in or start, vice versa, um, we get the vertex neighbor. Um, we will call a vertex R of G a root if, oh, that should be both R. Uh, I sometimes uh, mix up R and S because I sometimes call a root S or sometimes call a root R. But in this talk, a root will most of the time be called R. So uh, if we have a path starting at R and ending at V for every vertex of the graph. So uh, a path is always a directed path basically a sequence of edges that start uh, at this uh, that one ends at the starting point of the other edge so uh the covering um the covering tree of a directed rooted graph um is just a space of uh paths starting at the vertex or the root r and uh, we connect those two um, uh, those paths with an edge uh, if they are expansions of one another just by one edge. So this gives us a kind of, I like the, the term unfolding tree of a graph because we kind of unfold everything. Uh, but universal cover is uh, a more accepted term. Um, so, uh, now that we have all this theory, uh, all this notation, uh, we can call, we look again, if we have a, uh, almost automorphism representative now on the universal covering tree of a rooted graph, um, then, uh, we call, uh, uh, this representative, a uh, Higman Thompson representative, if for each leaf P of T, uh, uh, we of T1, uh, we basically only do interesting stuff on the leaf and leave everything else uh, the same. So every expansion, uh, if we know how uh, our uh, automorphism acts on the leaves. We already know what it does everything, everywhere else. So this is a Higman Thompson representative. And um, any uh, almost automorphism that has a representative that is a Higman Thompson representative, uh, we call a Higman Thompson element. And there we get a Higman Thompson group of the tree. So um, uh, now my question was, uh, we've got those groups and they depend on graphs and there can be a lot of different graphs. So my first question was, okay, when are those groups isomorphic to each other? Well, I, uh, I wasn't able to um, get this um uh to solve this question completely but a first step uh, i think is natural just to say all right uh maybe we can't uh, say much about the higman thompson group at first let's look at fir first when the two when two universal covering trees of different graphs are almost isomorphic to each other to do this we introduce the graph monoid so the graph monoid is a very nice, but very simple uh, algebraic gadget that allows us to kind of uh, uh, to better describe at the almost structure of our uh, graph and of our universal covers of a graph. Uh, it's basically a commutative monoid that's generated by the vertices of a graph G and uh, with the relations that every vertex is equal to the sum of its neighbors. 
So with the multiplicity uh, of each vertex being as many edges that go to that vertex. Uh, so this is uh, a simple idea, but it will it will basically solve uh, the question uh, when two universal covers of a graph are almost isomorphic. Uh, so um, if we are uh, working with the graph monoid, uh, we can uh, first use the graph monoid to determine when, uh, if we change the root of the graph, we produce an almost isomorphic universal cover. So this is the first step, and it's basically the most important step uh, because um, because if we after that it's just combinatorial massaging of graphs basically. Uh, so uh, this is a simple result. Uh, so we have a graph and two roots R and P. Um, and we can show that uh, the unfolding tree based on R and the unfolding or universal covering tree based on P are almost isomorphic if and only if R is equal to P in the graph model. And this allows us to swap around. Uh, uh, look at the graph and be like, okay, uh, we can see which roots produce almost isomorphic universal covers, which roots don't. Um, and now it's it's basically just a combinatorial theory that I don't want to rehash in this talk uh, to actually uh, show the uh, show when two graphs uh, produce uh, or two rooted graphs uh, produce um, almost isomorphic uh, covering trees. And um, this all uh, comes down to solving the word problems in a graph monoid. And a graph monoid, if the graph is finite, and we, we will always be talking about finite graphs, uh, is a finite degenerated commutative uh, finally pre-presented uh, monoid and we can use the uh, I think yeah the Knuf Bendixson algorithm to solve the word problem it takes some time it's an exponential algorithm but uh, we can't do better it was actually shown that uh, there is no better algorithm uh, so we just if we want to do that we run this program and we have a uh uh, we have um, we have an answer, but this is just the first step. Uh, we know okay when to um, uh, when to covering trees are almost isomorphic, and then of course the Higman Thompson groups of those covering trees are isomorphic, and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's not the only case where the Higman Thompson groups are uh, isomorphic to each other. To uh, get some other instances of this, we look at a more complicated algebraic structure, although they're very much related uh, to each other, the Levitt path algebra. Um, so here's the definition. Uh, it's It's a the Levitt path algebra is a star algebra uh, generated by the vertices and the edges and the kind of involutions of the edges. So edges star uh, that basically uh, boils down to um, taking, uh, if we put together edge star and edge, uh, what we get is the terminus of the edge if we put edge star and another edge, we get zero. Uh, we see that the edge swallows its origin and its terminus from the left and the right, and vice versa for the star edge. And this last um, last condition is reminiscent of the graph monoid, 
uh, because we should say that, oh, the vertex is equal to its adjacent edges times the star edges, the sum of those. And um, if we if we kind of look at uh, look at those conditions pretty hard, we, we kind of can figure out uh, when we get zeros how to um, uh, how to uh, reduce uh, products, and we can show that uh, the set of two paths P and Q uh, were as paths. Uh, when we when I say paths in the uh, Levitt uh, path algebra, I mean just products of the edges that consist of these paths. So we have a path times the star of the path. Again, if we apply the star to a product, we we do the involution thing. So we uh, reverse the order of the product and apply the star to every. Uh, uh, every member and uh, the set of paths times star of another path where those paths end in the same um, end in the same vertex. This uh, generates uh, our Levitt path algebra as a module. Um, so if we look at this um, uh, this generating set as a module, we can say, well, maybe we can, uh, instead of saying uh, uh, any paths, P and Q can be any path, we can kind of control it and get some more interesting uh, sub-modules from this. Um, so uh, what we can do is say, OK, uh, we don't take just any paths, we uh, take the paths that start at the certain vertex. So uh, we have the submodule generated by, again, by path P and Q, P times Q star, uh, where they end at the same vertex, but they all start at vertex V. And I will call this the subalgebra, the Levitt, the rooted Levitt path algebra. So, we kind of get the root v, and usually uh, in our usage, v will be the root. So uh, this uh, these subalgebras uh, are uh, those are in fact subalgebras. We generate them as a module, but if we look at them, they are in fact subalgebras. And uh, as a an and as an aside, we can use them to uh, define a grading of the Levitt path algebras, but it's important to note also that those path algebras have different units. So uh, the um, uh, the Levitt path algebra in general has a unit, which is the sum of all vertices. Uh, but the rooted path algebras have the unit, which is the root. And they're all different. So. We still get the unit of algebra, but with a different unit. So um, now how I will treat the Levitt path algebra, I will treat them kind of um, the same way, uh, kind of similar to how we treat uh, matrices. So while, um, let's say, uh, you know, we can look at the higman thompson group, as the permutation group and look at the Levitt path algebra as the uh, uh, as the uh, um, matrix algebra. Uh, so we define the uh, set of unitary matrices or unitary element of the path algebra, or that should be just any R, but we will swap to Z soon. Uh, and then we define the symmetric. Again, this is pretty standard. So x and x star. Uh, so x star has to be the inverse of x. Uh, and Or we say that x star has to be the same as x. And then we define, which is a bit of a uh, not that nice of a definition, and it doesn't always work, the uh, diagonal unitary elements 
So uh, we kind of look at the unitary and symmetric elements that um, that act on the rooted Levitt path algebra such that uh, any uh, any element we can decompose into uh, into two elements that one of those elements uh, that have uh, that are kind of eigenvectors uh, of this um, uh, of this matrix or of this element uh, that with first having uh, eigenvalue one and the second one having eigenvalue minus one, and you can like. Uh, already see this will only work if R is Z or some other very simple ring. But yeah, uh, if we do those definitions, and uh, I want you to note those definitions are all uh, general, so all defined with just uh, the involution, multiplication, and addition. So those sets are always preserved under any isomorphisms uh, of our um, uh, of our rooted path algebra or of the big path algebra. So if we look at those, we can actually show that the uh, unitary, uh, that the Higman-Thompson group uh, is isomorphic to the unitary group modulo the diagonal unitary group. Uh, I won't give all of the proof, but I will give some. Uh, the first step, uh, uh, which is showing that the Higman-Thompson group kind of embeds uh, in the inter group. So if we have a Higman-Thompson representative, uh, we can just say, OK, let's look at all the leaves of uh, the tree that we take away, T1. And we say, OK, let's uh, write P times uh, phi p star, and we can put like plus or minus one in front of them however we want. And what we will get will be a unitary element. So this is a way of embedding uh, the higman thompson group inside of the unitaries. And uh, we see that we can see that, in fact, those are all the unitaries in uh, the levitt path algebra uh, based on Z should be here. And um, then we can see since they are all, uh, we can get rid of those plus minus one if we just um, factor through uh, the diagonals. And uh, here uh, we can see that those this group will be preserved under isomorphisms of the Levitt path algebra. So we can uh, write this proposition. Uh, so for any two rooted graphs, if there exists a, a star isomorphism taking one Levitt path algebra to the other, uh, that takes the root that we've picked to the other root, uh, that we pick the root of G to the root of H, then we have an isomorphism between the Higman Thompson groups. And uh, this is pretty easy uh, to show. The only the only thing that we haven't shown yet is uh, noting that the rooted uh, Levitt path algebra can be written in this way. So it can be written as all the elements that R acts as a unit on. And we can then apply the previous result that we have. So uh, this allows us to kind of explore the Hickman-Thompson groups using the theory of Levitt-Pav algebras. And uh, this kind of opens up uh, ways to kind of maybe uh, look at uh, when the converse of this will be true and exploiting the algebraic structure of the Levitt-Pav algebra to say something about the Ingman thompson group. And I will quickly close uh, this talk by talking about a um, um, an application for this. So we 
uh, a reduction of our structure of the graph that preserved the Higman Thompson graph. So uh, this is um, this kind of what I call the squinting graph. So uh, we will uh, kind of ignore some edges and just look at uh, some special edges and reinterpret the paths uh, between those edges, uh, paths between those vertices as edges of our new graph. So uh, more formally, uh, we take us we have a graph uh, we take a set subset of vertices and then define uh, for the the graph GM as having the vertex at M and the edges being paths starting and ending in M but not going through M in between so we kind of ignore everything that's outside of M that's a vertex we just look at the paths and um, uh, using this definition, uh, if we have such an M, uh, and we also need that any cycles in G go through M, because otherwise GM would be an infinite graph, and we don't like that. And of course, we need our root to be in M. Then if we apply this kind of reduction, uh, we will still get the same higman thompson group. So kind of the, the higman thompson group uh, doesn't really care about, in this case, uh, in the end, what comes out, it doesn't really care about uh, vertices with no loops. We can ignore those. Uh, to prove this, uh, well, I won't go through the whole proof, but we just define a function from the levitt path algebra of GM to G, which maps the edges to, of GM to the paths that they correspond to and then uh, expand from there. And uh, we can see after a bit of work that uh, this um, is in fact an isomorphism between levitt path algebra sending R to R and we can apply our previous result. All right, uh, I think that's it. Thank you for uh, listening.